Hey guys, welcome back. We're gonna do round two of our self-portrait today. I did wanna give a quick shout out to Emil from Mr. Achai's class because I'm pretty certain he was the first one to guess that the picture that inspired my self-portrait was done by Vincent Van Gogh and you can see that picture right here, right there. See, it's pretty rad. Also, speaking of self-portraits, some of you have been learning about Frida Kahlo, which is one of my favorite artists. I was so excited when I saw you guys were learning about her. So she was really big into self-portraits, and she liked to try to tell things about herself and her, her life and her mood and her opinions on everything and, and the world around her in her self-portraits. Self-portraits are a great way for an artist to express themselves and to tell a story about themselves. So that's what we're going to do today. I've been so impressed looking at all your drawings all week. I wanted to show off just a couple. Um, <laughs> we have been making some awesome art, so I wanted to kind of show it off real quick. Look at some of these. I wish um, these pictures were a little darker. Remember, when you're taking a picture, make sure your lighting is really good so it pops out like that. But these look so great. I wish I could show them off all day, but we don't have the time. Um, eh. oh, look at that one. <laughs> ah, come on. Well, it's not working. But I'll show off some more later. But anyway, we did such a good job. And I'm excited to kind of add some finishing touches to this today. But I want to go over a couple techniques. Most of you have your color pencils. Um, if you have color pencils at home, that's what I'm going to be using. If you don't have color pencils, you can use crayons and achieve a similar effect. So don't worry. But we're going to do a little practicing with color pencils first. Because you might not know this, but color pencils are one of the best art tools there are. You can do so many amazing things with them. I found this, oh my gosh, look at this. This is like a super retro piece of paper from an old school printer. Um, when I was a kid, we used to peel these off. Oh, memories. We used to peel these off and fold them into these weird little accordion things. Anyway, sorry, I'm getting distracted. But what I'm gonna do with these color pencils is I want you to practice something um, that you can do with them that really makes your pictures look nice and pop out. We can use these pen these pencils to get such nice colors. I'm going to take one, and the first thing I want you to know is you can get so many different values out of a color pencil. In art, the word value means like the darkness and lightness of something. So if I take a color pencil and I press kind of hard with it, I can get a nice dark color. But at the same time, if I press soft with it and a little smoother, I can get this much lighter color. Okay. Now the magic is if you adjust how you're pressing, you can start dark and then get softer and 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 softer. And you see how it kind of fades out. That's so cool. So that's one thing I love about color pencils is you can do some of this fading out. And what's really neat is if you fade this way with one color and then you take another color and start dark on this side and then start fading out as you get closer and closer to that color. See how your two colors kind of blend into each other? You can do some amazing work with color pencils. So we're going to be coloring in our super cool self-portrait by doing some blending and coloring. I'm going to do my hair first with a brown. And what I'm going to do is I want to get some dark parts in there. So I'm going to kind of get some of my lines and do that harder press so it's darker. And you can do this too. This is a good way to make it look more like hair. Just kind of do some of the lines dark like this. But then take the same color and lightly fill in the rest and it'll add all those little lights and darks, all those values to your color pencil work. And it gives it some more depth. You can see like how there's all these little highlights and darker places and it looks really rad. La la la. I'll do the same thing with my hair down here. Shady shade, color, color. But I'm just kind of lightly 
filling in and adding some of those darker lines for highlights. See how that kind of looks? Oh, so you got all these darks, you got all these lights, you have places that are brighter where the light is hitting. So you want to try to capture that in your drawing. I could even kind of put some darker places like in my roots where there might be more shadow, maybe behind my glasses. I could get darker on the edges. Let's see how adding some of this really pops your picture out and makes it look cool. So try out some of those darks and lights as you're going. Now, some of you already decorated your mask. You're putting all these cool designs on it. I was gonna save that, but that's okay. So if you've already done that, awesome. We're gonna add some color to it and it'll look rad. If you haven't decorated your mask yet, this is a really cool place you can show off something about yourself. The magic of a self-portrait is it should tell something about the artist. So in this picture, I want it to tell something about you. I don't want it to just be a face. So let's have our mask tell something about us. I was just about to show my weird creepy shirt. So I'm gonna put, maybe on my mask, I could put some little tentacles to go along with my shirt. So I might put some little squid tentacles going around. I'm gonna sketch them out first and just draw them on there. That could be a cool design. I'm kind of drawing dark, but then I'm gonna go inside of it and shade lighter. And that really makes it pop and look nice. Mario. So you can kind of go in like that and really make your picture pop and look cool. Um, if you wanted to try some of this fading from dark to light, check this out on the edge. I'm gonna start dark, and then as I go up my tentacle, I'm gonna soften out and soften out. On the bottom, I'm gonna start dark, and then as I go up, I'm gonna soften, 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 soften. On the edge, I'm gonna start dark. You get the point, and I'm gonna go softer, 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 softer. But this will really give your picture some cool depth to make it look more 3D. That's a good way to do 3D stuff. So um, now I've got my background color. I could start on the uh, same thing. I'm gonna just go over the whole thing with one color. Maybe I'll have my green popping around my purple because I like green and purple together. It's kind of the Joker Hulk colors, <laughs> but I like it. So I'm gonna go with my green just to start. You notice I'm trying to stay in the same direction. I'm going up and down as smoothly as I can. You don't want a scribbly coloring because that makes it sloppy. You wanna keep it as smooth as possible. And kind of where you're going together on these parts, you can go back over and smooth it up. But on my edges, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start dark and I'm gonna blend it over like that to give it some 3D look. So I press a little harder and then I lighten up as I go up the chin. Dark, lighten up, dark, lighten up. See, it's cool. So I could even, where I have that nose, I'm going to put like a shadow and then go away from it. Check that out. So I'll put a little shadow and fade down. And that'll make it look like there's actually a little bump where my nose would be. See? Gives it some threadiness. I could do that on these little shadowy lines I started to add. I could put some darker lines in there too. I could even get another color like this bright yellow and in the middle I could start shading and blending some yellow so that it has kind of a brighter center. Go like that. So I'm shading with my color pencil and filling it in and making it look the beast I can. Now, I want to keep on adding stuff. I'm just going to keep coloring for a minute and speed it up so that our video isn't mega long. But I'm going to go around and maybe decorate my shirt. I could put some stuff on it. I could add some details. I could do all kinds of extra stuff. So,
Okay. So, you see, I pretty much used black the whole time, but I made lots of cool things with it. Now, I'm gonna do the eyes next, and that's a place you can really do some cool stuff. Now, I've got blue eyes. You might have green eyes or brown eyes or hazel eyes or whatever, but I'm gonna lightly take a base color, and I'm gonna color it as lightly as I can, and just fill it in around the iris of my eye, around the little circle around the black part. Okay, see? And then, what I can do to make these look really cool is I can use that same color, and I'm gonna kind of make a little, little radial design going out from my eye. So I'm just doing these little lines with the same color, but pressing a little harder. Let me get it up close so you can see it. But when you do that, see how it really gives it that eye look? Kind of like this. So we <laughs> wanna do that so it'll look extra cool. Now, skin tones. I could write a whole book about coloring skin tones. But we're gonna color our skin next. Now, the cool thing about skins and humans is every human has a slightly different skin tone. Me and my brother have totally different skin. It's like similar, but mine's a little more reddish than his. He's got kind of a little more of a tanny color in his. So everybody has a slightly different skin color. Um, and we want to try to capture that, and color pencils are an excellent way to do it. So I'm going to, oh yeah, I got this out, oh yeah. I'm going to get my practice paper back out, and I'm going to show you just some ways you can do some cool skin tones. Let's say you had a darker skin tone. I always want to start light, okay, kind of like we did the eyes. So I might start with a brown and very lightly start shading in, okay, like this. Then. You could always take like your finger or your hand and kind of compare it. And if it's not quite right, you want it a little darker, you could go and do a second layer of that same color softly and see how it gets a little darker. Then you could compare. If it's not quite right, you could go back over a third time. But if you're being soft, we can keep getting it a little darker and a little darker and a little darker until you get it the way you want it. Now, another cool thing, you might have a white color pencil. Okay the white color pencils can smooth out your coloring. So watch, I'm gonna take this brown I just did and I'm gonna take the white and I'm gonna press hard with the white. And I don't know if you can totally tell, I'll just do half of it. But see how it kind of smoothed out that brown and made it look all creamy like skin? So that's a good way to do it too. Now if you have more of a tan color, maybe you wanna start with a brown and go light and then get like a orangey color and lightly go on top of that brown. And then get a white and go on top of that to smooth it on out. And see how this is a more like tannish brown. If you needed your color to be a little darker, you could um, go back over that with some more brown. If you have kind of a lighter skin tone, kind of like Mr. Galloway, like more of a peachy color, you could start with a light orange, kind of like this, okay? And then you could get the white and go over that and smooth out the orange, and it gives it kind of that creamy tan color, which is, or that peachy color, which is, um, you know, a good uh, close representation of like a lighter skin tone. So there's tons of ways to get great skin tones and to try to match your own skin. I would have a, I would have a page and experiment a little bit before you start doing it on your face so that you can try to capture yourself. Now, I'm gonna get out my picture and I'm gonna color him in. So let's watch. I'll start lightly with a color that's close and then I'll go back and smooth it out. Now, I'm going to get another color and kind of darken around the edges like before to give it that more 3D look. If there's a shadow anywhere, like maybe under my chin, I could add a little of that shading. Maybe around my nose, I'll make it a little darker. Okay, maybe inside my ear, I'll make it a little darker. Maybe under my hairline, I'll make it a little darker. 
we can kind of go, maybe my eyelids, I'll make a little darker than my rest of my skin. And then I'll take that white and I'll go and smooth it out to make it more of a creamy skin color. Everybody's skin is always a creamy version of whatever color it is. No matter what tone your skin is, it is creamy because we are humans with our soft, fleshy skin. I'm kind of speeding through this. You could spend all day making a color pencil picture look amazing. But see how I kind of went and did like that. Now, background is another place you can really tell something about yourself in a self-portrait. You could be in a place that you dig, like maybe you're uh, at a football field or maybe you're inside a video game or maybe you're at the coffee shop getting a coffee or maybe you're at the library or maybe you're at school or maybe you're, you know, I could go on all day. But having your background go with it could um, really be cool. You could also use your background as a place to just have some colors that you like or some objects around you that you like. It doesn't have to make sense. Maybe you're floating in a ball of jello and there's like, <laughs> I don't even know where I'm going with this. But it's your picture. You do you, man. So I'm gonna skip the background on my picture because this video has already gone on a little too long. But if you wanna take some time and make your background look epic as well, that would be great. But you can see, this looks pretty good. And I cannot wait to see what you guys do with your pictures. I'm excited. So um, once you have your drawing finished, you can take a good picture of it in a nicely lit place so I can see it and post it on Google Classroom. I would love to see it. And um, next week, instead of having a video like this, I think we're gonna have our little Zoom session so we can show off our pictures and talk about them. It'll be fun. So I'll give you info on that next time. All right, see you later.